want to share with you, yeah, in your family, family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, in the streets, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Seven sons 
and three daughters. He was also very wealthy. 7,000 head of sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, 500 donkeys, and a huge staff of servants. My question is, are you willing to be a servant? Oh, glory to God. We're going somewhere with this thing. And the most influential man in all the East. What influence do you have on the kingdom today? <laughs> Those are the kind of questions I want to ask you. Once again, do you have passion? Glory to God. Are you willing to be a servant? And what kind of influence do you have on the kingdom today? Hallelujah. I, I kind of want to take my time just for a moment. I don't want to get too excited. See, I know me. I can get excited and when it, 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 it just I'll just go wild. But I want you to have an experience today. My God from Zion. So if I would use for a title today, a, a title, I, I guess I would say experience, embrace, live. Yes. Those three words. I said experience, embrace, and live. Yes. Experience is different from embracing, and embracing is different from living. Right. Yes. Okay. Glory to God. So God gave me something to say today. He said, experience can cause fear, which will cause you not to want to embrace the spirit to live. Come on. I'm going to say that again. I said experience can cause you fear, which will cause you not to want to embrace the spirit to live. Amen. Job was having an experience. Glory to God. And the reason why I, I like to call this the Job experience because I don't know if you've been through anything, but uh, I a few things in my life and, and sometimes when you go through things it causes you to have a huge experience and sometimes we call it trauma Come on. okay I said sometimes we call experience trauma because why it triggers something inside of your body it triggers something inside of your mind it causes you to go up Side down, and it causes your emotions to go all over the place. One minute you're happy, next minute you're sad. One minute you have, are laughing, and the next minute you're crying. And, and there's going to be times when you sit in the dark and you don't know the reason. So that means depression has taken over your mind. My God, from Zion, there's some people like to be real educated and they like to call it mental illness. I just say sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy. Oh, glory to God. Because why? Sometimes some things is really just in your head. Come on. All right. That's right. Some things is really just in your head. See, a lot of times we get information from sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, and we create little stories up in our heads, up in our heads. You know the song that says, I, 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 I'm close to the edge. And, and I, 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 what? Come on. I, there you go. Come on now. I was trying to be saved a little bit, y'all. I'm trying to tell you because sometimes I get a little close to the edge and I feel like I'm about to lose my head, okay? All right, come on now. Oh, glory to God. And I do believe if we go down to verse 4. Yes. My God. Job, I'm telling you, was going through a battle. He was going through a battle. The devil is a liar because my whole screen just went and went double on me. See, let me tell you something. God, God getting ready to do something. Uh, Minister Nancy said something this morning to me. She said, you know, it's a lot going on right now. It's a lot of distraction. She said, God must have given you a mighty good word for us today. That's how you know that the devil is busy. When God got something in your belly, it's called an unusual sound that rests in your belly, my God from Zion. And the devil has a way to try to come in. But we don't give the devil no kind of loopery 
today. We just praise God. And when I tell you, one thing I love about the story of Job, because see, the devil, the Satan, Satan had to get permission to touch Job. God said, I'm giving the devil permission to touch you, but he can't take your soul. Okay. All right. Y'all ain't getting excited with me. That's all right. So the so 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 this is the funny part. So when when the Satan he was roaming through the earth, he had to still come before God. See, y'all fail to realize we give the devil too much credit. Y'all feel like the devil has power. He has a little teeny bit. But you got to remember one thing: he has to get permission from the Father. Can he touch you? All right now. He has to get permission. And because God gives him the permission, thank you, because God gives him the permission to do so, it's because he knows that you can handle it. That's right. All right. I said, God already knows that you can handle. You can handle the pressure. You said, well, I feel like I'm about to go over the edge. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to serve notice on you today. To let you know, you're not going over the edge today. You're not crazy. God said, I gave the enemy permission to touch you. But he can't touch your soul. So don't worry about nothing. Because your soul will still be intact. Okay. Enemy got permission to start touching Job Come on. because see God had a hedge and he had a real serious thick hedge a hedge where you could not peek over and you could not uh, couldn't look under it was a hedge that could nothing get over uh, couldn't get in so the enemy asked, asked God once again he has to go back to the hierarchy once again he has to go to the man of he had to ask for permission to touch Job. And God said, okay, listen here. I'm going to let you do whatever you want to do, but you can't touch his what? Soul. That's right. So you got to remember, when trials and tribulation come your way, he can do whatever he wants, but he just can't touch your soul. All right, all right, we're going somewhere here. Oh, my God. So, so the enemy began to mess around with Job. And he began to try to torment Job. And he began to bring destruction to Job. My God. First, they started attacking his wealth. Come on. Come on. How many of you are going through a dry season? All right. Jesus. Oh, yeah, the Bible says, the some of us are going through a financial dry season. Well, but you gotta remember, you gotta listen, you gotta read the text. It started from what? His wealth. So sometimes the enemy will come in and try to steal your wealth, try to take your money, try to cause you to lose a job, get you laid off, uh, 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 you didn't get a stimulus check, uh, or you're sitting there worried about where your next bill is coming from, uh, you're worried about how your bills are going to get paid. But one thing about it, you have to remember the hedge that is covering you, and it's covering your what? Soul. Oh, okay, all right, all right. So, Satan began to touch his wealth. He began to touch the animals that he possessed. Oh A messenger came by and began to tell Job the oxen. Oh my God, the oxen. And then all of a sudden, here come the donkeys. The donkeys, there's something wrong with the donkeys. See, and, and, and it was so funny how it didn't say a servant came. Well. <laughs> the, 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 the text did not say a servant came. It said a messenger came to Job. So you know what happens when the man delivers a message. It's really not what you want it to be. But had he been a servant. Okay, so I'm going to break this down for you. Uh -huh. A servant. Somebody who's willing to serve. Yes. Amen. Ah, my, 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 A servant, someone who's willing to bear arms with you. A, a, a servant who's willing to bow down and doesn't have their own personal agenda. 
<laughs> oh, come on now. See, y'all, 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 y'all not feeling me on that because I, the question was, are you willing to be a servant? Oh, uh, a servant is willing to work along uh, with the team and not try to put an eye in uh, between the team. Oh, come on, I'm going I get too many people uh, today. Uh, glory to God. I said a servant, my God from Zion, uh, will just say whatever it is that you need, I'm here. Uh, a servant will come on time. Uh, a servant will love you in spite of your wrongs and your right. Uh, a servant will keep their mouth closed uh, and know when to speak uh, and know when to be quiet. Uh, a servant won't go around sending out mixed messages to the kingdom. I said a servant. Are you a servant or are you a messenger? Amen. A person who delivers bad news. Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. I ain't get too many amens because I guess most some of y'all are not servants. Y'all are messengers. Y'all sit up on the phone and talk and, and you sit and you text and you find everything wrong with the leader and you want to tear down the sanctuary. Then you want to tear down the church. Then you want to tear people in the church. Uh, do you want to come for the pastor? Do you want to come for the first lady? But I'm here to serve notice on you today. Uh, are you a messenger uh, or are you a servant? Oh, glory to God. Oh, I got a last here. I'm going to go back to the experience. See, when you experience, I'm going to use the kingdom because we in church. So I'm going to use the kingdom. You got your pastor who's the leader. Yes. He or she is the leader. Uh -huh. My God. And you are a servant or a messenger. Uh -huh. A messenger will sit and find things wrong in the church. Oh my God. Wow. And tell everybody else about it. To pick apart the leader. Oh my God. And you say, well, I mean, I have rights. We all have rights. But until you experience My God. being the leader, uh -huh. what rights do you really have? Oh, yeah. right. Ah, some of y'all don't like that. Y'all, yeah, you ain't saying amen, but it's all right. Yeah. See, see, some of y'all really want to be the leader, but once you walk a mile in a leader's shoes, huh? once you walk a mile and experience huh? the opportunity to lead, huh? the opportunity to deny your personal time to sit before the Lord and pray and meditate on the word of God and pick up the phone when these wonderful people of God call you because they sit and shut in when the people of God call you and say pastor I don't have no money can you help me pay a bill or when you experience the opportunity to be a leader I do believe Okay. I just had to throw that in there. That's an FYI for your information. Jeez, more great. My God. Yes. I had to let you know because one thing about being a leader, it's not easy. That's right. Because the weight falls on you. The pastor, the weight falls on the pastor. When things go wrong in the church, they call the pastor. When the bills don't get paid, they call the pastor. When the police come, they call the pastor. When the people are dying, they call the pastor. When you can't bury your loved one, who do you call? The pastor. Glory to God. You didn't like that one, but that's all right. Yeah. Sometimes some shame has to come your way. My God from Zion. But when I say an experience, an experience is tough. Amen. It is. It is really tough. Yeah. It brings your emotions to a level where, where you feel like everything in the world is going wrong. Mm. And that's exactly what happened to Job. And when you're experiencing things, a lot of times you feel like you're the only one that's experiencing this thing. And Job felt lonely. Job felt like there was nobody there to comfort him. Job felt like he couldn't do nothing. Uh, he needed somebody to bear arms with him. But where was Job's servants and armor bearers at the time? There was nobody around but a messenger. A man and a woman 
that bears bad news. It seemed like when he would turn to his right, trying to get a little bit of peace, uh, what happened? Here comes another messenger. When he ran to the left, uh, here he goes. Uh, here comes another messenger bearing some bad news to him. Do you feel like that day after day? Sometimes uh, you feel like people are just coming and calling you with a whole bunch of bad news. People passing away. Uh, bills are not getting paid. Not knowing where your next meal is coming from. Not knowing if you wake up in the morning where you have a job. Uh, where you, uh, 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 how things are going to happen for the children. My God from Zion. You are wondering, wondering, wondering. Because the messenger just keeps knocking at the door. Every time you turn around. Another messenger coming to the, to deliver some more bad news. Oh, glory to God. But the one last piece of information from a messenger Jesus. that was willing. I said that was willing to deliver the bad news. See, with a messenger, they have to have some type of hope on their life. Mm. They have to have some type of, uh, uh, of joy with delivering news. Come on. Ah. So that means that they're disconnected from their feelings. They're disconnected from the Holy Ghost. They're disconnected from the emotional side. Because one thing about it, a person who's a servant, they don't have a call. To deliver bad news. My God. You say, I got a call on my life. My question is, what kind of call on your life do you have? Do you have a, a, a messenger's call? Or do you have a servant's call? Okay, I just wanted to throw that one out there to you. My God. So the messenger came and he gave. My God, Job, the last piece of the bad news. My God. Oh, God. And this is where the story really begins to shift for me. Oh, Do you remember in the beginning of the chapter? I'm going to just let you know. It said, Hallelujah, glory to God. In the beginning, it said, uh, 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 He had seven sons mm -hmm. and three. Yes. <laughs> the last bit of bad news was about his children. Yes. My God. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my child is near and dear to my what? Heart. Yes. My God, that pulls on my heart strength. When my daughter tells me, Mommy, I really don't feel good. It, it, I go from this big, strong woman to this little lamb that goes, Oh, my God. Uh, baby, come come sit with mama. Oh, come lay on mama's bosom. Come on, let me come for you. See, that's, see, that's what happens when you are a mama. That's what happens when you are a father. When you are a compassionate parent. Glory to God. You get excited when your children come to you and say, I really don't feel too good. I, I think I got a pain in my heart, mommy. I, I believe my ankle is hurting. Children 
don't see further than we can. All they see is what's going on right now. And what happened was the messenger came and, and told Job, Job, I got another message for you. I got another message. And, and, and I believe, I do believe, I do believe you want to hear this message. And Job was saying, okay, now that I took all my oxen, that I took all my donkeys, what else is the devil trying to take from me? But I, oh my God, from Zion, remember what thing Job's soul couldn't be touched. My God, from Zion. Inside of your body. 
There's still life there. There's still life there. You have an opportunity to live again. You have a lot of opportunity to recover from the situation. A lot of times we get caught up in the experience of it all, but we forget to embrace the experience. We forget to embrace that process. And that's what Job was doing. When he ripped his robe and shaved his head, he said, what? Naked I came from my mother's womb. Right there. Again, and take on whatever the trials. 
So my thing to you today again, are you willing to take on the trials? Are you willing to take on what God has for you? Amen. Some of it may be tears. Yes. Some of it may be sweat. Some of it may be happy. Yes. Some of it may be a little bit of good. A lot of great going on. But there's always more to come. Hallelujah. Right now, right where you are. I want you to begin to talk to God about you. Ask God to send his searchlight down from heaven over your soul. Begin to talk to God about you. Are you a messenger, a bearer of bad news? Or are you a servant who's willing to cover your brother and your sister during their trials? A servant serves. They love. They zip their lips. They're quick to listen, slow to speak. They don't spread gossip. They don't talk and say things that are hurtful. Because why? They know that it may hurt someone. So my thing to you today, are you willing to be a messenger or a servant? Ask God to search your heart. Begin to ask God to show you you. You need to know who you really are. We point fingers at each other, but nobody says, maybe I need to point that finger at me. Today, I want you to go home and I want you to look in the mirror and begin to ask God, is it me? What do I need to change, Father? So you say, well, I, I, I really, I really don't think I should have that. No, because let me tell you something. We are not living in a perfect time. We all make mistakes. Amen. I'm talking about from the head Amen. down to the feet. So there's times you really have to begin to ask God. God, show me me. Uh, show me me, God. Right where you are. Begin to ask God to show you who you really are. Say, God, just show me me. God, show me where I need to change. Show me what I need to do to do better. Because I want to be better. I don't want to be a messenger, but I want to be a servant. I want to be a person that does well and do well for others. My God from Zion. Father, if we have any sick among us right now, Father, we ask you to heal their bodies. God, we ask you to save the people's souls. If you don't know Christ, you don't know Jesus. Oh, come on. Ah, glory to God. You're going to have an opportunity. Minister Nancy is going to come up and she's going to give you that opportunity to get to know who Jesus really is. She's going to open the doors of the church. Because if you don't have a church home to go to, I go with her. She's going to give you the air opportunity. So when Jesus comes your way, you won't say, I didn't have a chance. I didn't have an opportunity. I Now was the time. Now was the time to get your heart right. Now was the time for you to get your mind right. Get right with God because time is winding up. I know as children we always heard Jesus is coming. He's coming. But he is coming. And he's coming soon. God bless you first Baptist. Come on let's give God a hand clap. I said come on let's give God a hand clap.